Good morning. We're so glad that everyone is here worshiping with us today, uh, either in person or virtually. Uh, we welcome you to Hemfield Church of the Brethren. If this is your first time here at our service, we do have a little gift, something like this, uh, out back on the table in the narthex after the service, you can pick it up. There are many announcements in the bulletin uh, today, but we did wanna highlight two needs, especially for our youth. First, they need people, also known as weenies, willing to dress up in silly costumes and hide somewhere on the Kettering Farm on October the 29th as the youth try to find them. Secondly, there are many ways to help with our youth's only fundraiser in the year um, during the Eastland Alpaca Open House. So you are welcome to donate supplies or money. Um, you can help make the chicken corn soup or do some baking here at church uh, or volunteering on the days of the open house. You can see um, all of the details in your bulletin or talk to someone out there uh, at the stand. We do ask that any donations for the uh, bake sale and things like that would be in the church on Sunday, next Sunday, because they will be baking that following week. Uh, Dave is going to introduce our speaker for today, Dr. Rebecca Dolly. Okay, well, we have the great privilege to have Dr. Rebecca Dali here from Nigeria uh, to speak at our worship service today. Uh, she is the founder of the Center for Caring, uh, em Empowerment, and Peace Initiatives. Uh, her ministry are the hands and feet of Jesus to those who've been traumatized by violence in Nigeria from the many areas, but especially the Boko Haram terrorist group. Um, she is the author of seven different books and many different articles about the subject. A book was written about her life. It's called We Have Walked in Each Other's Shoes. Uh, Deb and I have read this. It's, it's, it's amazing. Her story is an amazing story, her life story. And you just see God working in it throughout her life. These will be available for donation in the back after the service if you're interested. Um, Dr. Dolly was honored as the Global Humanitarian of the Year Award by the United Nations in uh, Geneva, Switzerland in 2017. And if you look at the bulletin cover, uh, Rebecca, Dr. Rebecca is uh, doing her acceptance speech at the United Nations for this uh, beautiful award. Um, the award recognized the dangerous and vital assistance that she offers to the parents and communities of the Chibuk girls whose mass kidnapping by the terrorist group Boko Haram uh, received global attention in 2014. Yet this effort represents only a fraction of the hundreds of thousands of victims of violence cared for to this day by Dr. Rebecca and her 30-year-old organization, uh, CEPI, as it's called. So in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we give you a very warm welcome to Dr. Dolly today. Okay, I've decided for our call to worship uh, to read two passages from Isaiah, which speak of the coming Messiah. Chapter 41, one to four says, here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness, he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. And in Isaiah 53, three, again about our Messiah, it says, he was despised and rejected by men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Please rise as you are able and let's worship our loving and compassionate Messiah.
Our scripture for today is from 1 Peter 5, 6 through 11. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast, to him be the power forever and ever. Amen. And I think the children have already left, but I would like to invite any other children who are still here that you may um, go to Children's Church. Um, and uh, parents, you may pick up your children in the upstairs service room there. 
Okay, uh, before our prayer, I wanted to mention that all the praise songs and all the scripture that we heard today were carefully chosen to enhance Rebecca's message to us. Some of you may be asking, why do we need to hear about terrible things that are happening in this world, especially when they're so far away from us? But it's good for us to be reminded that not every place in the world is a safe place. And yet, and yet, there are brave Christians everywhere who are resisting the devil, who are standing firm in their faith through trials, knowing that Jesus walks beside them in their times of suffering. And we can all be strong in his power. And it's my prayer today that all of us can evaluate our lives and consider where we might be able to help um, with issues of justice, oppression, bringing the light and love of Jesus into these situations. Would you join me in prayer? God, we lift up the holy and powerful name of Jesus. Thank you for ministries like Rebecca's, which lovingly cares for the broken. We pray that as we listen to her, that we also are listening to your Holy Spirit as you breathe into us inspiration to do your will whether giving of our time or talents to an organization to help the poor, to help the broken, to help those who suffer injustice, wherever you want us to help, Lord, inspire us. Thank you for the power of prayer, which we all, every one of us can do to move mountains and bring about healing and wholeness and justice in the name of Jesus. Give us all your strength, Lord, and your grace and your love to continue to do your work here on this earth. We remember that you taught your disciples to pray, and we, re we repeat that very same prayer now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now I introduce to you Dr. Rebecca Dolly. We're going to show a video first. <laughs> When people are hurting, Dr. Rebecca Dolly shows up. When they need training to rebuild their lives, she's there. When people in towns threatened by the terror group Boko Haram need encouragement and supplies to plant crops to make a living, she brings hope for the future. Dr. Rebecca Dolly has become one of the primary partners in helping rebuild the lives of her fellow Nigerians, devastated by the destruction caused by the Islamic terror group Boko Haram. Most of our houses are destroyed and some have nowhere to sleep. So some they run back to the cities, some they stay but in very, very difficult condition. No food, nothing. Houses were destroyed and the need is so great. The crisis in Nigeria has forced hundreds of thousands of people from their homes and cost many their lives. In relocation centers, refugee camps, places where people have fled, Rebecca organized the distribution of badly needed food and household supplies. Her organization, the Center for Caring, Empowerment, and Peace Initiatives, known as CEPI, 
worked with partners all over the world, including the Church of the Brethren in the United States, to provide food and supplies, often at great risk to her safety, to the most vulnerable, both Muslim and Christian, including many widows and orphans. In addition to the Church of the Brethren, partners include Christian Aid Ministries for home repair, food and supply distributions, the International Rescue Committee, which has helped with food distributions and food voucher programs, and gender-based violence and malnutrition monitoring, and the United Nations High Commission on Refugees, which has helped with distribution of non-food items, protection monitoring, camp coordination support, and other organizations. With the present distribution, the organization and Tiny Hands reached out to over 100,000 displaced persons in Jos, Chibok, Yola, and Uba. Distributing the items to the displaced persons, the Executive Director Center for Caring, Empowerment, and Peace Initiative, Dr. Rebecca Samuel Dali said, the burden of the displaced persons should not be left to government alone, considering the challenges faced by the government. But Rebecca does more than provide immediate relief. CEPI works at long-term solutions to the issues faced by the victims of Boko Haram with a series of skills acquisition centers that teach skills to widows and orphans and provide each participant with the materials to start their own business. Some are already in their villages. Before, they couldn't go because they have nothing to do at home. And some of them, their houses have been burned and nothing. But with the empowerment, they are now back into their community and then doing the things that they learn. Through her organization, Rebecca has also provided trauma healing, housing repairs, education for orphans, livestock for widows, and moral support for those in need. Her boundless energy and tireless work alongside her staff Hello. have reflected her faith and the practices of her church, Ecclesia Yanawa on Nigeria, the Church of the Brethren in Nigeria, which places a strong emphasis on not just preaching the word of God, but living it out through meeting people's needs in Christ's name. The list of places where she and Seppi have conducted food distributions is enormous. The graduates of the Skills Acquisition Centers have had life-changing experiences as they learn a skill and rebuild their lives after the tragedy of death and destruction that unfolded among their families. Most of them, they saw how their husband was slaughtered and how their parents were killed. So we teach them handcrafts, uh, sewing, knitting, and how to make liquid soap and a lot of things. So they are making it and they are selling it and they are gaining uh, small, small money. And uh, we'll give them sewing machine and uh, some seed money, like hundred, hundred dollars so that they will go and start their own life again. Her church partners, those whose lives she has touched through her efforts, considered it a privilege to walk alongside her as she serves her fellow countrymen and women during these challenging times. I'm really very grateful for this church, and uh, especially for Brother Dave and his wife and the committee who invited me here and the connection from uh, Cindy and Paul. Uh, and I'm really blessed by the song and uh, Please, the choir master, can I have a copy of this song? It's really refle uh, refreshing and comforting, and I would like to share it with my fellow uh, Nigerians and people who are really suffering. It is well with our soul, and through it all, Jesus is there. What a wonderful song. Thank you so much. I'm grateful. So, we in Nigeria, we have uh, a lot of history 
the both ethnic, political, and religious structures of our country. And uh, you will hear briefly about it and the programs initiated by CEPI and uh, partner organization to uh, respond to the needs and also uh, plead for support. Where can I press it? <laughs> Sorry, turned it off to save the battery. Now it's on. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Thank you. So Nigeria, from his history, is multi-ethnic and multi-religious society. It is complex country with uh, multi-faceted uh, problems and. Uh, we are going to hear the summary of uh, such crisis, Boko Haram, Fulani, Hesmen, banditry, and then kidnapping. And uh, some painful situation that people are going through and how SEPI is responding. So this is a map of uh, Africa and then uh, Nigeria. So the, the, this uh, map of Nigeria is there. It has a population of uh, over 200 million and uh, we have 36 uh, states. And 65% of Nigerian population are youth according to a lot of uh, documentary and uh, over 40% of this youth, they are not employed. So due to poverty, poor health condition, and uh, this crisis, uh, we have a lot of challenges. And 50% uh, are Muslims, 45% are Christian, while 5% of Nigerians are traditional religion worshippers. But some uh, books stated that they are 50-50. Nigeria today is challenged, uh, is characterized by violent and uh, a lot of issues. And Nigeria has two contradictory system of government. And uh, we have uh, federalism using cyclic constitution and uh, they try to, we try to follow the democratic system of government by electing leaders. And uh, we have Islamic state. Some in Nigeria, they have uh, Sharia law and they have uh, uh, Sharia court and they try to observe all this and there is Sultan of Sokoto and he is the head of the caliphate and uh, he is a supreme political religious uh, leader of uh, Nigeria both politics and then religious the Muslims, most of them, uh, agree that he is uh, their leader. And uh, Boko Haram aim is to return to what they claim to be an original political and moral practice of Islam during the time of Prophet uh, Muhammad. They fight to bring Muslims back to what they see as a pure form of Islam. They teach their followers that those who die in war are not dead but are living in the presence of their Lord, rejoicing bounty things provided by Allah. And in our center we have uh, the program, a lot of people who were uh, in Boko Haram captivity 
and uh, both women, children, and uh, girls. And they, 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 they told us a lot of things that they are really brainwashed that if they die, they can commit uh, suicide and uh, bomb themselves, but then they have life. So this lead to a lot of killing. Uh, since beginning of Boko Haram in 2002, Boko Haram has killed over 100,000 people, and they have kidnapped over 20,000. So it's not only the Chibwa girls, 276, no. Over 20,000 people are kidnapped either by Boko Haram or Fulani his men or some that organize different type of crime and claim that they are either Boko Haram or terrorists because there are a lot of things that is happening in Nigeria. Even in the east, we have uh, some groups and uh, south and all over that are organizing this kidnapping, making it as a business. So this is SEPI record of the, of 100 lists of people killed. Uh, those who attended uh, 2015 Tempa uh, uh, conference, we have the wall of healing. So it's lists and the stories of people killed and now we have uh, doubled that number. And uh, so we have five lists of people killed which was scanned by Pat from the Church of the Brethren and uh, Professor uh, Justin and who donated the scanner and then analyzed the data from CEPI. And, uh, if you go to SEPI, you will see the pile of uh, files. And these files are all, uh, where is your pointer, brother? I, can you come and help me? Okay, yes, I see it. So this one are all files, lists of people killed, and the record of their family the date that they were killed, and then uh, some describe how they were killed. And we have pictures of the grossal and terrible uh, how they murder them. So these are the, this is Pat here, and these are SEPI staff who pack all this and uh, make it uh, in our office so that it will be safe. And it's be, uh, scanned there so that it may not lose. So uh, uh, this is me and uh, with a bullet. And this is one of the pastor whom Boko Haram leader took him and he stayed with them several months, but then he was uh, released. And uh, I, I really escaped uh, this uh, bullet and harm many uh, times. And uh, this uh, kidnap uh, Boko Haram, uh, Chibok girls, and 90, 95 of them, 95% of them are Christians from Church of the Brethren and uh, other churches. So we visit their parents and we know uh, them. But it's not only Christians, these uh, girls, most, almost all of them are uh, Muslims, they were kidnapped from uh, Dabchi, uh, February 21st, 2018, and uh, four years after the Chibo girl, the Chibo girl, 14 uh, April 2014, 
and this one 21st uh, February 2018. So 2014 for the Chibok and this one 2018. But uh, only one girl that is still with them. They released, the government released all, uh, they pursued the, the Boko Haram to release everybody except the Christian girl who is uh, Leah Shaebu. And uh, we have been hearing about her, her story, her parents, and uh, there are a lot of promise, but up to now, she's still in captivity. So uh, this one, 15 December 2020, bandits kidnapped 344 Kankara schoolboys in Katsina State. Most of them are Muslims. But then uh, it is in the news that the government paid 344 million naira. Uh, equivalent to, by then, 765,000 uh, uh, dollars. And uh, if we compare with this, we wonder why is the Muslims, all of them are released, and then uh, one Christian girl held in Dapchi, and why are all these Kankara boys released and the government paid the terrorists, but the Christians from Chibok? Although there are some Muslims too, but there are a lot of Christian girls, over 100 still in captivity. And the Chibok, uh, we have a lot of advocacy, plead, and a lot of trillion of dollars spent, but up to now, they are being held. So there is a lot of uh, myth that uh, in Nigeria that is uh, not, we cannot understand why. Religious and uh, favoritism and a lot of things is happening. Uh, we have Fulani headers attack, banditry, and kidnapping is the current crisis consuming Nigeria. Uh, so now the Fulani is they are attacking people all over, burning houses, destroying farm products. They are constantly kidnapping people for ransom and you have to pay a lot of money uh, before your family have to pay a lot of money when they hold you there before they will release you. Some, they will get the money and kill you. Travelers, they attack travelers, villagers, people at wedding, funeral, naming ceremony, schools, they rape women, and they killed those who did not pay ransom, as I said. And uh, recently, they are targeting a lot of uh, pastors and then church workers and all this because they believe that church have money. Uh, and it is both affecting Christians and Muslims. Uh, so... And then, almost everyone, nobody is safe. These are policemen, and uh, they were uh, kidnapped, or police officers. They were sent on duty, and then uh, they kidnapped them. And uh, this is recently, March, uh, 20, March 28th, 2022, the problem facing Nigeria is that nobody is safe. The president, he, he's a guard 
was attacked. And uh, House of Representatives, senators, uh, foreigners, and nobody is safe. But then the government, instead of them to stand firm, there is something skeleton in the cupboard that uh, uh, instead of them to face them and go to the forest, sometime the military and the police, they will say that uh, uh, people try to stop them, that don't go and harm those people because they are fellow Nigerians. So why is it uh, nationwide? Because it's, uh, kidnapping is nationwide now because it's political. Because if uh, I have political opponent that I don't love him, then I can go after him or her and then try to negotiate with the people. They may not be full of enhancement, they may not be Boko Haram, but uh, there may be just rough people who are lawless, the youth who doesn't have work and they want money, so they may be organized and uh, uh, do it for economic reason, for religious reason, and uh, a lot of things. And it make it worse by ethnic anger, weak and corrupt government and criminal impunity. And there is shortage of security personnel. Uh, some of the big, big people, they have, uh, they divided the security personnel uh, among them and they are guiding their houses and uh, following them in Torej and all this while the mass Nigerians are left like this without uh, proper security. In a whole village, uh, in a whole town, few security men will uh, be there. And sometimes they don't have the gadgets, they don't have the car, they don't have the uh, proper uh, weaponry to fight those. The terrorists and all this, they are more, uh, they have more uh, arm than than the, uh, than the government. Uh, Sometimes uh, the arm who is supposed to be for Nigerians, they, they have been taken away by these terrorists. So, and there is a proliferation of weapons and support from some radical Muslims outside Nigeria. And politically, there are some selfish and corrupt polit uh, politicians employ jobless uh, youth, as I said. And economically, there is get rich quick by all means. So these are all the cause, causes. And there is uh, a lot of uh, effect, uh, rape, uh, they, are, they have put some women into forced marriages, death, and collective uh, family poverty due to payment of ransom. People are living in fear with mistrust and are suspicious of each other. And because of living in fear, uh, Nigerians, uh, we are hardworking people, and we don't want to be dependent, but then people cannot go to farm because of fear of adoption, kidnapping, and fear of killing, and fear of a lot of things that will happen. So the victims suffer psychological stress, trauma, and nightmare. And uh, the, if you, those who are raped, they are sometimes pregnant with unwanted pregnancy, 
and they, they have sexually transmitted diseases. And those who are in captivity, they suffer a lot of uh, maltreatment, beating, torture, death, and in some cases, even a slow death. They will kill you slowly. And victim family and relatives are getting poorer as they must sell all that they have to pay ransom. So, SEPI, we came in, and, uh, but, the, by, by, but then the SEPI Center for Caring, Empowerment, and Peace Initiative, I started the organizations in 1989, even before all this happened. Uh, it began with uh, three orphans and two widows, and I have no intention to start an organization. It just begins with a desire to help women and girls in poverty and extreme poverty. SEPI based on three central principles, caring and caring for the most vulnerable people, empowering women through education, promoting the importance of living in peace, and it is non profit, non-political, strictly humanitarian, and tax exempt, and it is not for profit organization. Uh, if you want to read more about uh, my life and the reason why I formed the, uh, the organization, uh, you can buy the book. We have walked in each other's shoes. So my life story, how I suffered, and uh, how I am, why I am uh, so passionate of helping the most vulnerable. Because if someone was raped, then I experience. If someone is, is poor, I, I, I was wearing rock. If someone have no house, I, I, I lived before in dilapidated house. I remember my mom would get up in the night and place uh, a bucket where water is dropping so that we can sleep and no money to fix the roof. And uh, if someone is hungry, I suffered hunger. We ate once in a day or some time. We, we, we cannot eat. We have to go and farm and do some things so that we can earn something to eat. So uh, we have walked in each other's shoes. And so my personal story you can hear it in the book. Uh, and I research, I do my research, and then I experience how I grew up in a male-dominated society where women are often seen as property. As such, women have nothing of their own, some women. Girls who are often trained to serve men they are excluded from decision making. So I have experienced what it means to be a woman as I grew up in a poor family. These experiences influences me to write on women's situation and the church and then empower women. So uh, I discovered that if woman is empowered, educated, and know what she can do, then she can uh, be able to earn her own living and help her husband and then uh, thrive. So, and then even make decision among the family and uh, the, the extended society. Because there are a lot of women in Nigeria who are really 
are trying and they are powerful and they are leading the community and lecturing, organizing, uh, head of organization and a lot of, even at the world uh, sector, there are a lot of Nigerian women who are really trying. Why? Because they are educated, because they, are, they know what they are doing. So that is why we empower women to thrive and to be resilient, to live in a more dominated male uh, society. So, uh, so that they will not be uh, either to serve their brother or to, to serve their father or to serve their husband, but then we teach the younger generation to learn from their parents uh, so that they can uh, move and thrive and flourish. So in summary, uh, uh, the key point that I am sharing about women is that discrimination against women has its root in our society and causes violence against women. The bandits, the terrorists, inflicted uh, inflict pain and violent rape, brutality, and torture women, kill women, as a vicarious punishment on men. Because as property, if you uh, took the daughter away, or if you, uh, the wife and all this, then, it will be painful for the men. So, so what are the greatest needs of the survival of uh, this uh, Boko Haram that we, we try to do? Uh, here, we have uh, immediate needs. So the immediate needs is uh, uh, food and nutrition support, shelter and housing, assistant, health care, water, and sanitation. Because sometimes there will come no food and uh, no house or living in dilapidated homes and they need help, health. And uh, the long-term needs that we offer in SEPI are trauma healing programs reintegration of women and children who are kidnapped by Boko Haram, and uh, we teach skills, acquisition, and then livelihood and education support. And then we have uh, agriculture support, and then we have protection and peace initiatives program. So, this is the visit that uh, we have been doing to Chibok. We visited uh, the, the family and we saw the grand, uh, here you can see a grand mom who is uh, really hurting and uh, mourning the granddaughter. And uh, this one, this woman, her daughter was uh, kidnapped in Chibok and her husband was killed, and uh, they, they tried to, uh, and they destroy her property, so she, she has nothing. That is why we only supply mud and uh, soap and small things, and just empathize and cried with her. So these are the children they are sad and uh, sorrowful. And when we visited Chibok during that time, the children never are not playing, and they are all mourning their people. And it's not only Chibok. In the community of most Nigeria now, if you go and visit, you will be sober. Uh, uh, when my son, uh, disappeared in 2011, I, I, I experienced how hard it was for my children and all of us. And up to now, I don't know 
whether dead or alive. No grave to visit, nothing. Uh, so it's really horrible. And uh, these are still the Chibok family. Uh, we provide food and uh, some of the things. So uh, we provided home for those who are really uh, under terrible condition. Uh, this woman here, the husband, tried to kill her. So she ran. Uh, I said uh, in, on the news in Nigeria, I ran out of the house while, while he was trying to slaughter me, wife of a man who killed his children, narrate how she escaped death. So we... Uh, now she's uh, with Sepi, attending in a safe space, learning how to sew, and then picking her life up. Uh, you can see uh, uh, she is uh, really uh, very happy here and learning how to sew. Uh, she's in class and uh, learning, uh, she has a space and then she is uh, at least uh, safe there. So there are some wives that are rejected by their husband and uh, even including the children who are, uh, uh, who are in the Boko Haram captivity. And she gave birth there, so their husband rejected them. So we took care of such women. And uh, there are a lot of uh, children as young as five become Boko Haram uh, become Boko Haram, they cook or they, they were forced labor. More than 80 uh, children whom we had their story, uh, they, they told us a lot of horrible times that they were raped like 20 times a day. And uh, some, they, they have a severe sickness and infection and they die of it. And uh, the land and property have been taken away. Children miss school. Millions of children miss school because of fear. And a lot of unaccompanied children. Uh, these are all children. They don't know they are where their parents are. And these two. So some are orphaned. Some are unaccompanied. So we supply their uh, part of their needs, small, small need. Uh, the, the Nigerian federal government, victim support, uh, supported us and we foster 250 uh, children with uh, basic need and money, cash, to their caregiver. So uh, these are the trauma healing and this one, the way we do our program, we do assess, we identify, and we provide the service. So these are the food and non-food, uh, uh, food and nutritional support. So bags of mess there. And uh, this is how some women, we gave them, and they were very happy there. And uh, these are the shelter. Uh, Christian AIDS Ministry gave us money to build 50, uh, 42 houses, uh, and we, we end up building 52, because when we changed the money, it was 
uh, more than what we can, uh, it was left over, so we built 52 instead of 42, so that the women and children uh, whom husband were killed can uh, have something to, or some who came back from Boko Haram captivity. And uh, this one, it was uh, built by United Nations, and then, but then SEPI distributed to, to the most vulnerable, the people that we assess. And uh, so this is head. We uh, supply the medicine and connect people, refer them to go to the uh, clinic, and uh, so this is water and sanitation. This one is the only water that people are drinking, and uh, animal and, 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 and people share the same, uh, the same thing. So we sensitize them to boil the water so that they will not uh, become sick. So sometimes in some villages there are scarcity of water. And this is the trauma healing. Widows and children work with trained counselors individually or in group to let go of their anger and understand the importance of forgiveness, prayer, and then Bible study and sharing their stories. This one is uh, we wrote everything on paper and kneel it on Jesus Christ uh, on the cross. So we prayed and then burn it after the, the final day of trauma healing. And uh, this is uh, the reintegration. Uh, initially, we meet with the victim and screen her and begin healing process. This uh, woman here, she, she has a baby from uh, Boko Haram. And this is the same, she has the baby. So we work with survival one-on-one -on -one to help them. This is a SEPI counselor and working with this and even uh, comforting her. And uh, she told us that no one ever took the children, uh, child from her. So it's a sign of love that uh, this SEPI uh, uh, volunteer held the baby. It meant a lot to her because people are afraid that they are bad blood. So this one, I was uh, uh, lobbying on their behalf to meet with the family or community leader to verify the home village and then to accept the victim. And uh, these are the skill accusation. This one is the tailoring. This one, knitting and uh, this one, computer. So this is uh, the graduation, and uh, this, this was 79, where SEPI was 30 years. So we have the vision, we have the experience and the capacity, and the need to trans uh, transform, uh, but then with small resources. So, uh, this is the agri and livelihood uh, and, and livestock support. This one, uh, fertilizer, half a size, uh, and this one is he or she goats. And this one, uh, he and she goats, distributed to the widows. And uh, this one, uh, we brooded uh, brawlers and uh, we gave them and then buy seed, feeder, and drinker, so that each woman can have something to sell and eat. There were some women that said that they did not taste uh, meat for a month. So when they, they brooded the brawlers, they can have something for their family and then sell some to help them. And uh, we teach them also how to establish savings and loan association. And uh, we have a success story. Uh, they, they really shared a fund, uh, $537,000 uh, naira 
and they, uh, they, they have a lot of things and they empower themselves because we say that without saving, you cannot keep on. So these are the, in the community, there are bombs and uh, some, some people, uh, the, uh, the Boko Haram planted bombs, so it killed people. So we go and sensitize people that they have to be careful, especially this one. Uh, when the Boko Haram, when people return in their homes, and it was back then in 2015, uh, because Boko Haram chased us out 2014. So in 2015, we went there and uh, guide people to be careful. And uh, we support physically challenged and the elders with uh, food and training. We people with specific needs such as malnourished children. We teach them how we buy grain, groundnuts, soybeans, and mix it, and uh, we distribute to the malnourished children. And uh, so, SEPI uh, want to be a lot of uh, the building a structure, and we call it SEPI uh, 2, uh, Pam and Dev uh, Riggs from Violent to Victory uh, Institute. And there is uh, some, and, and within this, we have already, uh, like this one now, someone have already paid our administrative block, and we are building it. Uh, you will see it. And uh, this one is clinic, and this one is uh, male hostel, female hostel. This is a uh, training center, uh, livelihood training center. These are trauma healing uh, centers. And uh, this is a uh, multipurpose and Counseling center, we name it after Fre Frida, and the trauma healing center, we name it after Tom. And these are classes. So, uh, this one is a uh, staff quarters, and you can see wall all surrounded because it's dangerous in Nigeria to stay without fence. So, uh, this is uh, Professor Half Smith, and uh, he gave us a donation of over 130 something dollars. So we built, uh, we already roofed this structure, and we call it Professor Half Smith and Janet uh, Smith Conflict. And uh, this was uh, the dedication. We started in March, and uh, with the support of uh, the funds from CEPI, uh, CEPI US and uh, organized yesterday, we were in Gala, Gala, Gala fundraising in uh, uh, Sandy and uh, Dr. Paul house. They are generous enough and they hosted over 30 people and people are given and they did it last year. So with all these funds, then uh, we are building Feed the Hungry and providing a lot of things. So these are volunteers, and uh, this is uh, one of the buildings uh, that we are dreaming of. It's just a dream. It's Tommy Rescue uh, Trauma Healing Center. Tommy Rescue, he... He was studying law and uh, he committed uh, suicide, unfortunately. But then she wrote, he wrote that I, I cannot uh, stay, but then be sure to serve the poor and those who are in violent situation. And someone start donated uh, something in his name, that is why 
we, name, we will name the trauma healing in his uh, name. And uh, so this space, this building will provide a space for someone who is uh, like Esther. She, she was taken by Boko Haram and uh, pregnant, but then we took her and stayed with her for one year and she gave birth when I was around. And she named the girl after me, Rebecca. So this is Rebecca now. Uh, she was rejected because they said uh, she was bad blood and all this. I said, nobody is bad blood, so name her after me. And this is her family from Cameroon. And then uh, we host them. And uh, after she was uh, uh, released, uh, at least from trauma, she went back to uh, my degree. If you watch uh, Trump, uh, she was in uh, U.S. brought by by open door after we reintegrated, uh, re rehabilitated her, and uh, she shook uh, shake hand with uh, with Trump here. Uh, okay, so. Uh, Sorry, I'm about to finish. Uh, so, yes, I'm finding it here. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so sorry. Uh, maybe it's finished, so no, it's no, almost, no. we are almost. Sorry about that, that one, current slide, there we go. Okay. You know technology. So, and then it will be safe space for this uh, woman uh, uh, who escaped death. And now she's in, in safe space. So that building will provide her and a lot of people with them. We are using small, small structure, so we want it to be in the same place. So how can you help? You can make donation and support our different program. You can designate your donation to sponsor skill, accusation center, or classroom block, or staff quarters. You can uh, help the uh, hungry, and uh, you can donate as uh, Anne. Uh, she, she donated in, in uh, memory of Tommy, who love and care for the poor. So you can support a family with food or health care, etc. And this is our contact. Uh, if you send the check to uh, our treasurer, David Fuse, and his address is there, David Fuse, 1204, uh, Empire Cycle, Lancaster, PA, 17601, and all this. Or you can donate on our website. Uh, some are, are really confused. They, they, are, they are donating uh, through Church of the Brethren. Before, we were partnering with uh, Church of the Brethren, uh, but uh, since 2020, they focus more on uh, EYM. So if you, do, if you are really want to donate to SEPI, you can uh, give it to SEPI and uh, through our treasurer or through the website. If you want to donate to EYN as a general, then you can send it through Church of the Brethren. But uh, uh, that is uh, the, what I want to tell you. And you can pay by PayPal or your credit card and all this. 
So I really thank you so much and sorry for taking long. Our story is uh, so uh, much that uh, to summarize it is very, very difficult. But I really thank you for listening and I'm blessed that uh, you, you open your ears to hear and your heart and the warm welcome that you welcome us. We are really grateful. It means a lot to me and to the most vulnerable people. Let us pray. Our Lord and our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity given unto me to present what is happening in Nigeria. Lord, we are in your hand and we depend on you. And Lord, we pray that you will bring peace in Nigeria and in all over the world. We know some countries like Haiti and uh, other countries are suffering the same. Lord, talk to those terrorists so that they will leave bad things that they are doing and talk to our government so that they will do justice and uh, people will live happily and uh, continue to thrive with their children going to school and provided health and everything. Help SEPI team that are working in Nigeria day in, day out. Lord, we thank you for our donors. We thank you for each one that is helping SEPI. We thank you for what happened in Sunday and Paul yesterday, uh, the organization and the people that attended. We bless your name because of their life. And uh, we thank you for this uh, Hemfield Church of the Brethren. And Lord, as we conclude the service, Lord, we pray that you will be with us and your peace beyond understanding we co continue to control our hearts. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. On behalf of Hempfield Church of the Brethren, we thank you for joining us for today's service. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 
Amen.